The summit between President Yoon and Biden was undoubtedly the highlight of the President Yoon Suk-yeol's deep visit to the U.S. The two leaders managed to secure a landmark deal aimed at strengthening extended deterrence against North Korea's evolving threats. For this week's weekly focus, we delve deeper into the Washington Declaration with our foreign affairs correspondent, Pei Enji. Welcome back, Enji. Good to be here. So, Inji, let's jump right into the Washington Declaration. Now, that is to defend against and deter North Korea's attacks. Now, what makes this statement so significant or special? Well, the fact that they've laid out a separate statement on extended deterrence itself is very significant because it's the first time the two countries have done this after holding a summit between their leaders. This clearly shows that both countries are strongly committed to working together to deter nuclear and missile threats. This is what U.S. President Joe Biden said will happen in the event of a nuclear attack by North Korea. Okay, nuclear threat. Look, a nuclear attack by North Korea against the United States or its allies or partisans uh, or partners is unacceptable and will result in the end of whatever regime were to take such an action. Under the New Deal, the U.S. will take more visible deterrent steps by sending a nuclear-armed submarine to South Korea for the first time in 40 years, along with other strategic assets, including nuclear-capable bombers. The agreement involves the creation of a nuclear consultative group, where they will share information on nuclear assets and intelligence, and jointly plan responses and exercises. Right, and now that we're talking about a consultative group, the two allies have already been discussing ways to deter North Korea's attacks, but through extended deterrence strategy and consultation group. Now, walk us through the differences between the two. Right, like you just said, um, Seoul and Washington already have a consultative group called the EDSCG, launched in 2016. The group is made up of vice ministerial level diplomatic and defense officials from both countries. But there were doubts about its effectiveness as consultations were not held regularly. Seoul's presidential office said the new nuclear consultative group, or NCG, will hold consultations four times a year, with two or three to come later this year. In a joint press briefing following the summit, President Yoon also noted it will be held regularly and that they'll discuss ways to conduct joint operations using both countries' weapons. 북한의 위협에 대응하여 핵과 전략무기 운영 계획에 대한 정보를 공유하고 한국의 첨단 재래식 전력과 미국의 핵 전력을 결합한 공동 작전을 함께 기획하고 실행하기 위한 방안을 정기적으로 협의할 것이며 그 결과는 양 정상에게 보고될 것입니다. So there are hopes that the new consultative group will boost credibility and effectiveness, as it means South Korean perspectives and capabilities will likely be factored into the strategic planning from now on. Right, and it appears that the NCG has been inspired from NATO's consultative group, the NPG. That's right. And President Yoon recently called for measures that are stronger than NATO's consultative group with the U.S. Now, what's the difference between the two groups then? Well, the biggest difference is the deployment of nuclear assets. As for NATO, U.S.-owned nuclear weapons are stored in five member states, including Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Turkey. But under the NCG, nuclear assets will not be stationed in South Korean territory. Biden specifically underscored that Washington would not deploy nuclear weapons on the peninsula. Instead, as I mentioned earlier, U.S. nuclear armed submarines will dock periodically in South Korea to deter North Korean threats. So there are some concerns that this may not be as effective as NATO's arrangement with the U.S. Some experts have assessed that Biden is committed to giving Seoul a central role in strategic planning as South Korea reaffirmed its commitment to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty by putting aside efforts to pursue its own nuclear arsenal. Another difference is that the NCG is a bilateral agreement between South Korea and the U.S., whereas NATO's NPG is a multilateral agreement. But under both agreements, the U.S. has operational control of the nuclear weapons. Now, moving on, also during Yoon's almost a week-long trip to the D.C., U.S. President Joe Biden mentioned the importance of trilateral cooperation with Japan. Let's talk about that. Right. The Yoon administration has been working to restore ties with Japan in recent months. Biden thanked Yoon for his, quote, courageous diplomacy with Japan, saying it made an enormous difference that has strengthened their trilateral partnership. In a press conference, he said South Korea and the United States are working together through their trilateral cooperation with Japan 
to ensure the Indo-Pacific is free, open, and secure. And according to the Japanese news outlet, the Yomiuri Shimbun, the leaders of South Korea, U.S., and Japan will likely hold a summit on May 21st in Hiroshima on the sidelines of the G7 summit. All right, let's see how the Washington Declaration and also the newly created NCG will be effective enough to deter potential threats from North Korea. Right, and we also have the trilateral summit, which could take place next month. All right, thank you so much for your wrap-up today, Inji. My pleasure.